In this part of the grid trading series, I'm looking at a suggestion that actually came in two parts. Uh, the suggestion was to close all the trades at an average profit and to increase the trade size as we get more trades, so, so as the price moves away from the profit point. I'm trying to keep the videos a bit short, so I'm attacking it in actually three stages. First stage today, I'm going to show how to write the code to close at an average profit. And then in the next part, I will add in the increasing size of trades, a martingale type approach. And then in a following video, I'm also going to show how you can just use the increasing size of trades on the baseline without using the average profit. If you've just started watching with this video, I am building on code that has already been created in earlier videos. There is a playlist for the entire series, but you don't need to watch every video just to get to the beginning point here because many of the videos simply implement a suggestion and then I go back to the base code again to start with the next. There will be a list in the description to the video that shows how you can get to this particular video through the stages of actual code development. So if you want to just go through from the beginning and see how this code has been developed, check that list in the description and then you can watch just those videos. Now I had the editor open when we left this at the last part, we were up to version 2.013. Uh, now 2.010 up to 3 were about using some kind of trend filter. So this is a completely different approach. I'm going to start with a new numbering 2.02 .02, and I'm going to go back and start from version 2.00 which was the baseline, has no other features in it and I'll use that as the start of the 2.02. .02. I don't think anything else is needed in the main. I've just changed the version number and added a comment here. I will add an input. I don't simply want to close all the trades once we've reached the average price because that will mean closing at an average of zero profit. So I'm going to have an input of the target profit. And I'm going to enter this as the profit in your deposit currency, not in points. And this is also profit per lot. Obviously, if you've got 10 lots open, you want a higher profit than if you've only got one lot open. Back to main, I'm going to make some changes then in leg. I'm going to create two global variables to hold the total open profit and the total open volume. And then I'm going to want to change this on tick close because I'm no longer closing when I reach a price point. I'm going to be closing when I reach a profit point. So what I want to do is make sure that I know the average or the total profit and total volume each time I execute on tick. And as I've said, this is not the most efficient way to do it. I'm going to be counting through all the trades every time there's a tick. But this will work for the sake of proving that this method does something. Um, what you would want to think about is whether you do this at every tick or whether there's some other trigger that you can use to perform the recount. Okay, so all I'm saying is that the minimum profit that I'm looking for is the average profit, which is in lots, or is in value per lot, multiplied by the volume open. So that gives me the total profit that I'm looking for, minimum profit that I want. And if that profit open, which will be calculated in the recount function, is greater than or equal to that minimum profit, then I close everything. Now in the close all function, I had this condition, if the closing price is greater than or equal to the target price, but because I'm going to close all trades now as soon as I hit that average, I want to remove that condition. And now the changes in the recount function. Firstly initialize the open profit and the open volume. And 
I think that will do it. So as I loop through now, I've just added statements to increment the profit open, and I'm including the profit, the commission, and the swap from each of the positions that I have open. And then I'm also incrementing the volume open. I think that's all I need to do. I have no errors, so let me run a test now. now all my inputs are the same. I've got my average profit at 10. Now I've let that run in the visual for a little while. And what you can see here, if you can make out these lines where I've got a close at the average for all of these buy trades. So I've closed some at a loss and some at a profit, and there should have been an average profit of 10 there. And again here, far greater number because I had a strong price movement downwards, then it came back and it has closed out all of those buy trades at the same price. Um, and there are some places in here where you might be able to make out that it's closed the sell trades as well. If I just go back and check the graph, and obviously this hasn't run to finish yet, uh, you can see we reach points where there are bumps. Now the bumps happen because it begins by tr closing trades that are in profit and then closes the trades that are at a loss and eventually everything just slopes upwards because it's making that $10 per lot average profit on each trade. I'm just going to run it through to the end now and then we can compare the results with the baseline result. All right, here is the end result. I actually, I'll go back, I changed this input to a $100 per lot profit uh, because when I think about it, the original baseline, I'm trading a lot size of 0 0.01 and each trade there made approximately $1. So if I'm looking for a per lot profit, that would be $100. So to make this comparable with the base, I've increased that. So the graph then does show that uh, we're staying much closer, the equity staying much closer to the balance line, except for places like this. And that was a little disappointing. Uh, it's certainly not what I expected. And I think it is because although we're closing those lead trades and not leaving the outliers behind, it takes longer to get to a close point because if we have a significant move in one direction, the price has to come halfway back plus a little bit before it can close anything. So we're actually holding some trades longer than we should normally. Uh, it has given me some ideas for a further revision to this, but it's a little bit more complex. So I'll have to draft that up and test it a few times and come back in a future video to show that. Uh, but altogether, the profit hasn't dropped by very much. If I look at the back test result here, 3,593 is the profit on this, where on the original it was 5,021. So we've dropped a little. Uh, at the same time, though, the absolute drawdown at 870 is much higher than the absolute drawdown from the original, which was only 578. So although this hasn't left trades behind or hasn't left those outlier trades behind, never able to be closed, it is creating a larger drawdown and a reduced profit. So I'm not sure that this on its own is a benefit. But as I said in the introduction, this came as part of a two-part suggestion, which is to increase the lot size as we get further away. So uh, I'll do that in the next video, and then we'll be able to see how that uh, increasing lot size, the martingaling on the lot sizes, works with this approach. If I compare the graph for the baseline with the graph for this closing at average method, it appears that I'm a little bit in front in terms of the carry. It's a little bit difficult to tell because the scale is not actually linear across the bottom. It, it actually, um, it's linear for number of trades, but it's not linear by date. So I can't really tell just visually how long trades have been held. But it does appear that overall, the gap between the equity and the base, or the gap between the equity and the balance on the baseline is bigger in total than the gap between the equity and the balance on the closing at average. But that large drop around uh, October 23, that is worrying. And that also leads to a very large maximum drawdown. If we look at the comparisons, I've placed the average price at close after the range MA200 hour. And that's because strictly it fits within the absolute drawdown being less than 1000, which puts it at the top of my scale. But the profit is less than the 200 hour range. It's not a good result. The profit is down a little, but the absolute drawdown is very high. It's the highest absolute drawdown that I have. And then if you also look at the maximum drawdown. Now, the maximum drawdown is the largest difference between the balance and the equity throughout the entire run. If that maximum drawdown happened earlier in the run, before the balance had built up, 
then there would be a much higher absolute drawdown because it would easily go below the initial balance. So that is also very concerning in terms of this approach. We just happen to be lucky that the absolute drawdown is only 870 because by the time we reach that maximum drawdown, we've made a significant amount of balance profit already. So I'm not necessarily recommending this. In fact, I don't recommend any of these approaches, but so far, the base is still the best result. It has the highest profit, a reasonable absolute, and a reasonable maximum drawdown. So I'm still looking to find a technique that will improve on a simple baseline grid that buys and sells at each level of the grid. As I said earlier, next video will incorporate a martingale type approach where we increase the size of the trades as the grid gets larger. Uh, and then the following video, I will apply that increasing the size of the trades without the average closing price. And then we'll see if any of those have a better result. If you do want to see more of our videos, then click subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when the next video is released. And if you found any value in this video, click the like button. So until the next time, thank you for watching.